Trump administration's policies will raise U.S. wages without causing broader inflation. That is according to Treasury Secretary Steve Mnuchin. He said, quote, there are a lot of ways you can have the economy grow, you can have wage inflation, and not necessarily have inflation concerns in general. So what does that mean for you, for me, and for other investors out there? To help us explain, we have Simon Constable. He's a fellow at John Hopkins Institute for Applied Economics. He's also the author of the WSJ, that's the Wall Street Journal Guide, to the 50 Economic Indicators That Really Matter. Simon, thanks for being with us today. I appreciate it. Thanks for, thanks for having me. All right, so higher wages with no inflation. Sounds like a, a fantasy scenario, but can you explain if that's possible and what it would mean for investors? What it would mean to have that was you'd have to have an increase in productivity. Um, typically, an increase in productivity would require more capital investment, so more productive machines, um, that sort of thing. It usually doesn't involve making people work harder and faster. I think it's pretty clear that most people in the U.S., who are working are working flat out and then some more. I think we all know that. We've all we've all been through the, the mill with that. Basically, it'll mean more machines, more capital, more productive ways of doing things. So it is possible. The the problem is is that it's very hard to measure productivity these days. I mean, how much more productive mm. or how much less productive are you now that you have maybe a smartphone? Um, you know, some people might say you're less productive because it's an annoyance. Um, other people say, well, actually, you can do you can do more. So it's very hard to measure that, but it is possible to do it. Whether it happens, that's another matter. All right, so we'll see on that. And uh, productivity is, is is difficult to gauge, as you mentioned. There is some other concern, though, in, in, about the economy. If we're at a peak now, if we could be seeing a bubble soon, I want you to react to something that economist Peter Schiff. Peter is, you know, is he a little bit pessimistic? But here's what he had to say in late January. The economy has not improved under Trump, right? We don't have a booming economy. I mean, Trump keeps telling us we have a booming economy, but nothing is booming. Well, he later said after That's claiming the Republicans are on the verge of being blamed for another market collapse, which he says we're flirting with another market collapse. Do you agree with Peter Schiff? Well, I think Peter has been um, claiming there's going to be a complete Armageddon in the market for quite quite a while. It, it's, a, it's a repeated claim, and he has some legitimate worries. But I think um, instant Armageddon in the markets and the economy isn't happening just yet. I would actually say that the economy is doing quite a bit better than it was uh, right before the election. I think there's a, a lot of optimism uh, among small business owners. And when small business owners are optimistic, they tend to want to hire more. We've seen really quite a, a solid amount of hiring at a very low level of unemployment. I would say that this is about as good as it gets in the economy. I mean, it really is. It really is very, very good. Very low unemployment. You know, a lot of people who are, are getting jobs who've maybe wanted them for a while. Um, people who were maybe part time getting getting full time jobs. I would say it's pretty good based on the data and also the feeling. When I talk to investors and um, you know and and business owners, there's there's a much more of a feeling of great, we can make some money now, this is good, and maybe we'll hire some people to help us. Not as dramatic as what Peter Schiff is predicting, but he's not the only one calling for a, a steep correction. Morgan Stanley, uh, one of their analysts there, says that what we saw earlier this year with these dips in the market is just an appetizer for the main course that could be coming later. Do you think if not a long-term recession, there could be some significant impact, a serious, uh, more significant correction coming down the road than what we saw just a couple of weeks ago? So let's not confuse two things here. The market and the economy are related like distant right. cousins. Yes, they're related. They have some DNA in, you know, in, in common, but they're not the same thing. So if we saw, if you, if you go back a very long time to 1987, the market, market had a 20% correction in, or, or crash in one day, right? That was huge. The economy was doing fine. 87, a lot of people had a lot of jobs. The, the, you know, the two things are not the same thing. So, yes, the market could see a massive correction. Does that mean the economy is going to implode? Probably not. I would say that the two things are not necessarily on the same page at the moment. If you have an extended period of the market going down, then you tend to get people getting a bit pessimistic, a la Peter Schiff, and saying, OK, you know, maybe I got I to gotta spend less, and that actually has a self-fulfilling prophecy on the economy. 
I don't see that we're there yet. We could withstand, you know, another 10 percent down in the in the stock market quite easily without that having really much impact at all on on the economy.